Hey guys, this week we're taking a look at a stay-at-home short film I made with my five-year-old son during quarantine. And that starts right now. Hey guys, Ryan Camp here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we get started, I just really wanted to say that I believe in equality for all, and I hope that you guys are staying safe out there during this time of civil unrest in the United States. And I'm really hoping and praying for some positive change of some sort to come about in the wake of all of this. So like many of you out there, I've been stuck at home for a really long time, and I've really been itching to make a short film of some sorts. So I sat down and took a look at everything that I had available to me here at home, and it basically was just me and usually my kids. Um, so I set out to make a short film uh, with my five-year-old son. He's always really wanted to be involved in something that I'm doing. And I thought it was about the right time that maybe he was old enough to take direction of some sort. Uh, he's very animated, and I thought maybe he might make a good actor. And it turns out he did a pretty good job, and I'm really proud of him. Um, but we just set out to make a short film here at home in the backyard using very minimal resources. I spent maybe about $30 on one particular uh, piece of music for the film. But other than that, I spent no extra money other than the gear I already had. So I just really wanted to take a look at the film itself and just walk through it uh, scene by scene and tell you guys everything that went into making it and some of the corners I cut and just how it all turned out. If you haven't seen the full film uh, already, I'll post a link to it down below, of course, and there'll probably be a card that pops up here in one of the corners. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you guys check out the film in its entirety by itself first before watching this video. That way you won't be spoiled or anything like that. Okay guys, so here we are checking out my stay at home short film the stone uh, starring my five-year-old son um, shot this during quarantine over the past week um, took probably about five hours total to shoot this thing and it basically ended up being a sequel to my short film body uh, not really a sequel but kind of a spiritual successor to that film it's kind of the the same overall tone and gist of that film uh, like I said before if you haven't seen the stone uh, in its entirety and just the film itself I recommend that you go watch that first to see the film and then come back here when you're finished to take a look at how it was made and hear some of the things that went into making it so this first scene here um, really was shot later on uh, after I had filmed the scenes with my son uh, the way this whole thing came about is my son just walked in my room one morning and told me he was bored and i said you know what i'm pretty bored too i said how about we go out in the woods and uh, make a movie and at first he was kind of hesitant and then he kind of warmed up to the idea so we basically i just took my camera i didn't take any lights no audio equipment all we had as an idea was just to film my son in the woods i didn't know if this was going to turn into like a you know just a kind of like a b-roll style thing with no story just showing him walking through the woods and it was going to be like a, you know a scene of sorts or if it was going to turn into a film with an actual story but once we got out there and started shooting it really started to take shape i guess it's just the you know this is just guerrilla filmmaking at its core you know i really didn't have any preconceived ideas or notions about what this thing was going to be uh, so we've dressed my son up in some of his favorite clothes. I really wanted something that would stand out from the green uh, and browns in the dark forest. So I put him in a, a red shirt so he would be able to stand out from the background a little bit. And we just went out in the woods and started shooting. Like I said, I didn't take any audio gear because uh, I didn't intend on him doing any um, dialogue on screen. And I didn't take any lighting. So everything you see is natural lighting. I shot this with the Panasonic GH5, uh, the Metabone Speed Booster, and my Sigma 18-35 lens. And that was pretty much all the equipment that I used. I didn't use any sliders, no tripods. Well, actually, I take that back. I did use a tripod on some of the, the VFX shots so I could get a clean plate. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
So like I was saying, this first scene here was shot after the story somewhat developed as we went along with our shooting. I started off filming this scene right here of just my son standing still. And I got that shot first because I knew it was going to be a challenge to get him to listen to direction. He's a little bit of a wiggle worm and he won't be still. So I really wanted to just test him at first and just to see if I could get him to look in one single direction for a long period of time and see see what I could use with that. So this is actually the first shot we, we got. And then I told him after he was looking in one direction for a while, I told him to look up at the sky so we could get some sort of motion with him. And then I shot the sky shot looking up here. I then got some shots of him just walking around in the woods. I got him to circle around me right here in the woods. I stood in place and just filmed him as he walked around me in circles for quite a long time until he was kind of tired of it. Uh, that way I could make sure I got some, you know, some clean in focus shots of that. And then we just walked around in the woods and just got him, you know, walking in different directions. Uh, coming out, I got behind a tree and got some movement shots as he was walking through the woods. And then here we got these close-up shots of him looking off in the distance. And I told him, I was like, just pretend that there you saw something scary in the woods. Something's got your attention. And you just look like you're really scared. So I got that out of him. And he did a really good job darting his eyes around and looking like he was really unsure about what he was seeing. But let's go back to this first shot. After I had kind of established in my mind what the story was going to be as we went along, um, I got some shots of these toys in the backyard to kind of set the stage uh, that, you know, there was this young boy playing in his backyard and I kind of zoom in to the woods here and it gets kind of creepy and you just get the idea that there was a little boy playing with his toys in the backyard and he's somehow wandered into these, this dark forest and gotten lost. And that was basically the premise of the story. Um, and like I said, I didn't film any audio during any of these shots. So every sound that you hear in this film uh, was either placed in post, uh, re recorded in the booth here at home, a.k.a. my closet. And the voices you hear shouting for David at the beginning of the film are me and one of my da oldest daughter's um, friends actually went in there and filmed the female voice that you hear um, so big thanks to her. She went into the booth here, my closet, and you know shouted out David's name a little bit just to give the film some sort of premise and setup before everything got started. So all of the woodland sounds you're hearing, the footsteps, all that stuff was added in post. So none of the sound effects you're hearing were actually captured on camera. And this shot right here where David finally sees whatever this presence is in the woods the figure you see in the background is actually me. Um, I really wish I would have worn a shirt that would have matched my son's because the idea in my head was is that he was seeing a trapped version of himself um, trying to warn him of the danger that lurked in these woods. This ominous um, presence which we figured out was coming from this stone in the woods. It was beckoning to David and calling him to it. Um, and how that came about is my son was like, well, wow, dad, look at this really cool rock over here. So we picked the rock up and I was like, how can I use this rock in this film? What can we use it for? So then just, you know, it's really hard to say where ideas come from. Uh, the idea just sparked in my head that there was this shining, glittering gold rock that this little boy found in this dark wooded area and it was basically calling to him and when he placed his hands on it and finally reached it it basically sucked his spirit or soul into another dimension and trapped him there within that rock and uh, the ghostly apparition that he sees early on in the film is basically was supposed to be himself uh, appearing and trying to warn him or scare him away from getting trapped in this like never-ending time loop or whatever whatever it turns out to be in your head I'm kind of leaving things up to your imagination a little bit so these shots where my son is standing still and we're doing like some VFX work here with the shimmering gold color uh, 
the way I filmed those was I locked down every shot. So I basically got a clean plate with my tripod, which is a shot without any actors in it, just the backdrop. And then I would bring my son in. I got a shot of him staring off in the distance by himself for about roughly 10 seconds. I filmed all of these scenes about 10 seconds or more. And then I got a shot of just me in the background. I knew I wanted that scene to be blurry. or I, I knew I wanted the shot of me to be blurry because I was going to be in the distance. And I really didn't want you to be able to make out what I looked like or anything like that. So I really didn't have to worry about it being in focus. I just made sure my son was in focus. And I walked back there and got kind of a cool little spot uh, to make a nice composition and film myself standing there for a few minutes. I did the same thing with the shots of my son touching the rock so that I could add in the glowing effects more easily. And when he touched the stone and disappeared right here, I knew I wanted him to fade out and disappear or be sucked into the rock in some way. So I also got some clean plates and lockdown shots of that so I could easily do the VFX. There's a couple of shots here where I added in a little something extra. This shot right here where he was walking through the woods, I actually got some um, haze in a can and sprayed it to kind of simulate he was walking into some fog. And this shot right here where he finally sees the rock and we see it glowing and it zooms into it. I actually put my Loom Cube Panel Mini down inside this really cool stump and we ho hoisted the rock up on top there. and. I also sprayed some um, haze in a can with inside that stump to give it kind of a, I don't know, just an otherworldly kind of effect, some cosmic horror there for you. All of the music that you hear in this film I wrote myself, uh, except for this one little piece right here where you hear the kind of choir building up. I looked high and low on the internet, and I've been looking for this kind of sound for a while. For a choir, uh, I've been hearing it in a lot of uh, horror films lately, like The Lighthouse from Robert Eggers, and I really love cosmic horror, like, you know, Lovecraftian-style horror. And a lot of movies like Midsummer and The Lighthouse, some of my favorite new films, they have this choir sound when really scary or unsettling things are happening where it builds up and you hear all these overlapping, wailing choir voices and I've been looking everywhere for a sound like that online and I couldn't find anything anywhere and I finally just decided to find something similar which is it's kind of hard to just pick out that one piece but I found something on Pond 5 that was like a choir horror build up and I put that in there and then I went back over it in the studio and I basically did all of these wailing choir sounds myself and just overlap them, change the pitch, and I really and I almost pulled off uh, the exact sound that I was looking for. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. And it's something that I'm probably going to be using and building upon more in the future as I go forward with more films like this. You know, I've really been working on trying to figure out what I want my style to be as a filmmaker. You know, it's really hard to be original these days. But I really want to just combine all of my favorite styles of film into one signature look, feel, and mood. As a filmmaker, I'm really concerned mostly with mood and tone and visuals. Uh, that's what I love the most in a film. I can watch a movie, even if it has a bad story, if it looks beautiful and has beautiful cinematography and a really cool tone and mood, I usually find myself enjoying films like that more than anything. And I think that's why I really gravitate towards um, David Lynch being my favorite filmmaker. I just love the moods and the, the feelings I get when I watch his films, the unsettled feelings, the, the comedic things. Every frame of his films is like a painting to me. So really what I'm trying to say is like, these short films that I'm making, I'm making them to explore, you know, what I want to be as a filmmaker and, and try to develop my own style. And I highly recommend that you do that. You know, if you're at home, just use what you have available to you and try to come up with, just put together a short little film that has things in it that you love. 
shots that you love, a, a look you love, a color grade you love, music that you love. Just make it represent you as a creative artist and just try to develop that style. That's really what I'm trying to do as a filmmaker. I'm trying to develop my own style by using bits and pieces of different things that I love when it comes to filmmaking. But I know at the beginning of this video I said that I didn't take any gear with me except for my camera and and then I lied because I did end up using the haze in a can and my Loom Cube panel mini light. So those are two items that I did end up using. But I used those after the initial filming. It was something that later on after I was looking at the footage, I was like, man, I really need to spice this up a little bit more and add a little bit more flavor and intrigue to it. The VFX just weren't enough, so I went back and shot that, you know, one foggy scene and then the shot where I zoomed in on the rock and you could see the fog coming out from it and the light underneath. So that, I think that really added a lot to the film, the final film. One last note before we go, these VFX shots where the rock is glowing, just to give you some insight on how to, I pulled that off and maybe you want to do something similar in one of your films. Uh, I... Sometimes I use Adobe After Effects, but this time I really didn't want to deal with After Effects. I'm not really the best at After Effects, and it's kind of a headache for me to use it sometimes. Uh, the tracking is really great in After Effects. It works a lot better than what you'll find in Adobe Premiere, but I really thought I could get away with using the uh, motion tracker in Premiere, and if you don't know how to do that, you basically just go up to the effects window when you create a mask. So basically what you do is you just draw out your mask shape and then you go up here to the effects panel on the opacity mask and you hit play and the camera will go forward from the point you created the mask and it will give you a fairly solid motion tracked effect. There you go guys, the uh, on-screen debut of my five-year-old son. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at how this film was made and some of the insight that went into it. Uh, not much there, very simple story. You know, just something we did for fun because we were bored. But all in all, it was a great learning experience. Every time you create something like this, you learn uh, little tidbits here and there. You improve your craft. You develop your style more as a filmmaker. You learn new tricks and techniques from your failures and your successes, and that's what this channel is all about. And I hope this video inspires you guys to go out and do the same and create something. Uh, whether it's good or not, just go out there and create something and improve your craft. And there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that look at uh, my filmmaking process and my new little short film, The Stone, starring my five-year-old son. The true intention of this video is to inspire you guys to make a short film or any kind of film or video project while you're at home, stuck at home with just the minimal resources that you have available to you, spending no money. So if you do do that, uh, and this video inspired you to do that, I would love for you to post a link to your stay at home video below in the comments so we can all check it out. And please, if you can, go into some detail about how you made it and the things that went into your decision making and your filmmaking process. Let's post those videos and let's talk about them and give each other some constructive criticism. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already and please share this video with your friends and family on social media. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming along on this filmmaking journey with me. I am Ryan and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.